Hi kids, good evening and welcome to Yup Master. Today we're going to begin with a very interesting section of the cockroach. And remember one thing, every year in your NEET exam, one question compulsory does come from the cockroach chapter. So do not take this chapter lightly. And in fact, it is a very easy chapter. There are not much concepts to it. They're just names that you need to remember. So stay with me and we will learn all those names quickly together all right so let's begin today with the digestive system of the cockroach all right now when we start with the digestive system first of all we have learned a couple of pointers of this before and that is that the cockroach is an omnivorous animal what is the meaning of an animal which is omnivorous now Vorous generally, you know, it's about the eating, the nutrition. When we talk about omni, omni means both or we can say that it is having, it is eating both veg and non-veg. It's eating everything. In fact, you know that. In fact, cockroaches are able to eat everything except metals, plastic and glass. Otherwise, they can, they can digest almost everything. Now, if at all cockroaches are found to be an, in an area where maybe there is not enough food, or maybe there is an area where there are too many cockroaches, but the food is not enough. And these times, what do the cockroaches do if they're hungry? They observe something which is called as cannibalism. What exactly is a cannibal? Cannibal is an animal which eats another animal from its own species. So if I'm saying that even cockroaches can observe cannibalism, then this means that if there is a limitation in the resource of food, then cockroaches can end up eating each other. Yes, I am, I am totally correct that cockroaches can eat each other too. So these two words you need to be remembering. One is it is omnivorous and second that it is observing cannibalism. Okay. Now, when we talk about the digestive system of the whole cockroach, just like the human beings, even the cockroach's digestive system can be divided into two major parts. And those parts would be first the alimentary canal. Even in the cockroach, the alimentary canal ranges from the mouth up to the anus. And also along with the canal, there are associated glands. So glands means that there's going to be secretions coming from them. Okay. So when we see the digestive system, look at this. This is how it looks like. Well, when I'm saying that this is the digestive system, remember that this has been drawn just outside the body because for our study. Okay. Ideally, it is obviously placed inside the body. But one more reason for drawing it outside is so that we can draw each and every part very clearly over here. Okay. Now, when each and every part is clearly drawn outside the body, this means that obviously we're not able to fit it while drawing it inside the cockroach because the length of the elementary canal is actually longer than the length of the cockroach itself. So if I wanted to draw it, how would I be able to fit it inside the cockroach? So if I'm saying that the length of the elementary canal is longer than the actual length of the cockroach, this is simply indicating that the elementary canal at a certain region is going to be highly coiled. So and because it is coiled over there, that's why this long elementary canal is able to fit inside the body of the cockroach. Okay, so talking about the digestive system of the cockroach, I just told you it is divided into the elementary canal and its associated glands. Okay, now the whole canal is around six to seven centimeters in length. The length of the cockroach was around three to five centimeters. So that's why I'm saying that the elementary canal is going to be coiled somewhere. All right. Now, also we see that when the whenever the cockroach is going to take food into the mouth, okay, it has to open the mouth. And for opening the mouth, I mean that I mean that it's going to open the lips. If you remember, we learned the names of the upper lip and the lower lip, right? Upper lip was called as the labrum. Upper lip. All right. So the upper lip. Upper lip was called as the labrum all right then the lower lip was called as the labium all right so upper lip and lower lip as they open they're first going to open into a cavity and that cavity is before the oral cavity okay so there is a small cavity 
between the lips and the jaws of the cockroach. So let's see how that is placed. Okay, look over here at this diagram. This diagram right here on this side. Okay, over here clearly it has been, it, it can be seen that if this over here is the labrum. Okay, so if this is the upper lip of the cockroach and this over here is the labium, means this is the lower lip of the cockroach. When these two open, first there is going to be a small gap and after the gap will come the jaws. And can you see how the jaws are positioned? We have jaws which are up and down. That's why chewing movements in our body happen in this manner. But for the cockroaches, the chewing movements happen in a horizontal way. And how is that taking place? Just look over here. Here are the mandible. And mandible is what we call as the true jaw. And this over here is the maxilla. Okay, so these are the mandible that was the true jaw. And this was the maxilla that was the additional jaw. And its pair right here. Okay, so these mandible and maxilla are the actual jaws and if you see their placements, they are placed horizontally in such a way that when the cockroach wants to chew its food, it's going to be chewing in a horizontal direction like this. It's not going to be chewing like this, alright. So, as we see that there is going to be a gap because this is a two-dimensional diagram, we're not able to show you that but the upper lip and lower lip open. When they open, they're going to open into a small space. That space is going to be called as the pre-oral cavity. All right. After that space ends, behind that, you would have the jaws. Which are the jaws? The mandible and the maxilla. And in between that would come out the tongue of the cockroach. And where is the tongue over here? Right over here. This here, what you see, this is the tongue of the cockroach. And it is called as the hypo pharynx okay the tongue of the cockroach is called as the hypopharynx now why have i labeled this very specifically because the tongue of the cockroach is going to be dividing that cavity okay which cavity it's going to be dividing the pre-oral cavity the cavity before the jaws that cavity is divided into two regions okay how with the presence of the hypopharynx means the tongue so can you see on top there is a part which is called as sibarium and below the hypopharynx there is another part which is called as the salivarium so this means that the preoral cavity the gap between the lips and the jaws that part is separated into two regions which are those two regions First is the anterior part, the part in front is going to be called as the sibarium. The part behind is going to be called as the salivarium. So these are the two regions in the pre-oral cavity. So if an MCQ comes, okay, important MCQ that what are the two divisions of the pre-oral cavity? They would be anteriorly the sibarium posteriorly the salivarium all right so shall we go ahead now ahead we see again we come to this basic diagram we're going to stick to this diagram because this is the diagram which is given in our NCRT textbook important for our need remember whenever we are approaching any di any system of any part of the body whether it is our human physiology or any animal's physiology strictly stick to the diagrams which are found in your NCRT textbook because many a times those diagrams are taken and a labeling would be done A, B, C, D and you're asked to label it. So, just as important as your theory part is from your textbook, equally important are your MCQs or are your diagram based MCQs, okay? And all those are going to come strictly from the NCRD textbook, all right? Now, talking about the elementary canal, the whole elementary canal, it's ranging from starting at the mouth all the way up till the anus, okay? Right from the mouth till the anus, the whole elementary canal is ranging. Now, we see that this elementary canal is divisible into three parts. Which are those three parts? The first part is going to be called as the foregut. Okay. Very normal word used for the elementary canal, a gut. Gut generally is a word used for the intestine. But here oh, as a whole about the digestive system. Look at the alternate name. And the alternate name is what you need to be remembering for your MCQs. So, 
because the foregut is going to be a part which has the mouth definitely that's why because of the word mouth that's why the word stomo comes remember stomata stoma means opening and one opening over here is mouth so because the foregut contains the mouth that's why we can call the foregut region as the stomodium all right now coming to the middle part the midgut because it is in the middle we give it the name as mesenteron now understand this word in this word mesenteron let's break it up you probably know that whenever mes comes it's something in the middle okay but this might be something new for you that when i say the word enter all right enter is a word which is used generally when we want to describe about the intestine or when we want to describe something about the digestive system the core part of it that's why over here we're using the word mesenteron the middle part of the digestive system and the last part the hindgut this is generally the part which contains the rectum the anus from where the undigested matter will be thrown out and another word for rectum that we use scientifically is called as procto and that's why the hindgut can be called as a region which is called as the proctodium so here stomodium proctodium okay but here stomo will mean mouth and procto would mean the rectum all right so you have the stomodium the mesenteron and the proctodium hence onwards we're not calling it as foregut midgut hindgut we are going to remember these words as stomodium mesenteron and proctodium all right we're going to start these one by one first we'll begin with the stomodium the one which is ranging from here to this part of the digestive system and we'll do the labelings of them and the functions of each part all right so are you with me shall we begin so let's start with the first part of the digestive system and uh, before we do that just look at one point here that foregut and and the hindgut the first the first one and the third one foregut and hindgut let's see what they are actually internally lined with when i'm saying lining i mean the internal part okay outer part would be called as the covering inner part will be called as the lining so the foregut and hindgut are lined by cells derived from the ectoderm okay i'm talking about the germ layer foregut and hindgut are derived from cells of the ectoderm even in the human body the whole elementary canal is derived from endoderm only the top and the bottom means the mouth and the rectum the anus region that is derived from ectoderm because they are exterior openings so that is an easy way where you can remember that the uppermost part and the lowermost part are coming from ectoderm but the middle part the midgut or the mesenteron is the core part of the body and the core part of the body is going to be made up of cells which are coming from the innermost germ layer and that is called as the endoderm okay so this is very similar to that what we see in the human body where ecto the mouth and anus are made from ectoderm and the middle part of the whole elementary canal is coming from the endoderm same here foregut and hindgut have ectodermal cells whereas the midgut the middle part is having an endodermal cell all right okay so we start with the beginning part and that is your foregut and we also call it as the stomodium remember stomodium stomodium because it contains the mouth so let us just first before we go into describing the different parts we're going to initially see what are the constituents of this whole stomodium okay it's starting with the mouth region you all know that the mouth contains all the parts of the upper lip the lower lip the jaws and the tongue which we just described after the mouth then would open into the the tongue would open and the tongue will open into a part which we can call as the pharynx okay and because the tongue is arising from the pharynx that's why we're calling it as the hypopharynx because it is below the pharynx okay after the pharynx region here on the sides would be opening the glands of the salivary glands containing saliva that we will do when we study glands but now after pharynx immediately we come to the next part which is called as the esophagus just like in our body it is a food tube okay esophagus after the esophagus comes a very important organ used for storing and that organ is going to be called as the crop and after crop 
the last part of the foregut last part of the stomodium is going to be called as the gizzard gizzard has given another name and the gizzard can be called as the proventriculus so again most important thing you need to know the digestive system of the cockroach is divided into two parts first the alimentary canal and the digestive glands the alimentary canal can be divided into three regions first is called as the stomodium second is called as the mesenteron and third part is called as the proctodium okay now starting with the stomodium it starts with the mouth and the last marking of the stomodium this also comes as an mcq okay important part what marks the end of the foregut what marks the end of the stomodium it is the gizzard and remember gizzard can also be called as a name called as proventriculus now let's come into the details of one part and the other mouth you all know the upper lip lower lip and all let's come to the pharynx region when we talk about the pharynx region exactly this is the part i'm i'm talking about okay so pharynx internally it is lined by look at this word now the pharynx is internally lined by a chitinous cuticle okay chitinous cuticle is lining the pharynx okay the mouth is actually going to be opening into the pharynx and we see uh, as it is lined by the cuticle that cuticle is going to help it uh, in so that it can prevent it from injury from any of the food substance that it is taking in okay next we come to the pharynx is going to open into the next part which is going to be called as the esophagus further downwards okay the the pharynx opens into the narrow tubular esophagus and the esophagus is ahead it's just a tube there is no actual digestion taking place there just like in humans but the esophagus opens into a very important organ here which is going to be called as the crop so this is the crop here and the esophagus is opening into the crop the crop is a distensible organ just like how we have stomach similarly distensible organ in the digestive system of a cockroach is called as the crop so remember this word given against crop it is a distensible organ and even if you just look at the diagram it's quite obviously seen how the crop is a distensible organ okay all right next when we come to the crop actually it is serving to be since it is distensible it serves to be a reservoir of food okay so this is the region where just like in our stomach how stomach's main function is to store food for around 4 to 5 hours even for the crop of the cockroach this is going to be behaving as an organ in order for storing food okay and we see that its outer surface is covered by a network of small tubules which we're going to call as the trachea now what is this trachea you will understand when we learn about the respiratory system but just to tell you these are the tubules which are used for providing oxygen to the different parts of the body of the cockroach you know there are small openings called as spiracles we learned this in the external features spiracles will eventually open into tubules called as those trachea and the trachea are going to be covering the whole crop region all right okay now ahead we see the next part after the crop would come a part a very important apparatus which is there inside the cockroach digestive system and that is called as the gizzard when we talk about the gizzard this is actually an apparatus which is going to be grinding food okay this is like uh, as if you can say this is the grinder or the mixer inside the body of the cockroach that's why when i say cockroach can eat anything it actually can eat anything and this gizzard is going to make sure that whatever that cockroach is eating will be crushed into fine particles and crushed into a constant consistency so that it can be ahead absorbed okay so talking about the gizzard we see that the gizzard is located behind the crop it is thick walled and it is muscular okay why will it be muscular muscles are always present at any part of your body in order to contract and for contraction 
there has to be muscles there and why is there contraction required because look at this mechanism we'll see how how important the gizzard is okay first of all understand the gizzard can be given an alternate name you can call it as proventriculus okay and the inner lining of the gizzard is going to be chitinous again here the word chitin has come chitin means that it is going to be hard right remember the exoskeleton is also made up of chitin what is chitin chitin is a polysaccharide okay chitin is a polysaccharide or you can call that it is a carbohydrate all right inner lining is chitinous and do you know that those chitins are going to give rise to multiple teeth like structures okay so now how do we locate all this look at this apparatus we are concentrating on this region of the digestive system when you take a cut section of this region this is basically how it's going to look like okay remember those muscles i was talking about i told you that muscles are going to be there for contraction so on cut section over here this is how the cut section is appearing like okay and these parts that you're seeing here these are the whole band of circular muscles which are present which are going to be used for contraction over there all right inner to these muscles we see that there are teeth where are the teeth over here let's see that look at those there these that you are seeing over here these are the teeth present okay now how many teeth are there you can see that there is a circlet of six teeth okay six teeth are there along with bristles too so can you see how over here there are going to be bristles i'll give you a better diagram and uh, we'll come to that diagram right here okay so here is the diagram i told you that there are six teeth present and along with the teeth i also told you that there are bristles present too look at where they are okay so first let's just see and let's just see where these teeth are 1 2 3 4 5 and there are six teeth now those are the teeth what function are they doing remember it is hard i told you before also if there's anything hard whether it is external whether it is internal if it is a hard and it is in cockroach definitely it is going to be made up of chitin then even these teeth over here are made up of chitin now along with these teeth i told you that there are bristles so where are those bristles look at these over here can you see all these lines over here these are the bristles which are associated with the teeth now definitely if there are bristles present there there must be some function for it right let's see what that's all about so we see that it has six powerful teeth okay for that for forming the grinding apparatus and there are bristles which are going to be directed in a backward direction okay so backwardly directed bristles are there and what do these bristles do they are going to be doing the work of filtering the food and why do you want to filter the food so that whatever food is going ahead downwards whatever food is going downwards remains to be of a uniform consistency that is the very reason why these bristles are there okay just like how you have filtering mechanisms just for those filtering mechanisms just like that you have bristles here so that whatever food substance will cross the gizzard and go further down in the digestive system will all be of a uniform consistency okay so we see here that the gizzard is working not only like a grinding apparatus but is also doing the work of straining so it works as a grinding mill and it's working also like a sieve that's why we can many a times and in many many of your mcqs okay mcqs for your neat could come as the gizzard is working as a grinding a grinding okay and straining grinding and straining apparatus all right so now tell me uh, how many of you remember what were exactly the three parts of the digestive system of the cockroach how many of you remember that there was a foregut there was a midgut and there was a hindgut now i want you to write in the chat box right now what was the name of the midgut let me see how many of you get this right what was the name of the midgut i remember midgut okay that's that's the name i want right now all right now let's continue ahead when we talk about the gizzard at the end of the gizzard there is a valve okay 
Why is it called as a stomodial valve? Because the gizzard is marking the end of the foregut. And at the end of the foregut, the stomodial means to foregut means the stomodium. At the end, there is a valve. That valve is called as the stomodial valve. Now, this stomodial valve is having a very important function that, first of all, what is this valve? It is a projection from the gizzard going down. Going down where? From foregut, that valve is going to open into the midgut. And what does this valve do? Remember, if it is a valve, then by default, you need to understand valves always do the work of preventing. They are going to be preventing back flow. Okay. They will be preventing back flow. So, stomodial valve also is going to be a valve. It's a membranous valve. It opens into the mid gut if it is opening into the mid gut it's going to make sure that whatever food goes from gizzard into the mid gut does not flow back upwards okay so that's the main function of it and anything any time where you have food coming upwards that word that terminology used is called as regurgitation so if there is a valve present what is the valve going to do that valve will prevent regurgitation it makes sure that the food goes only in a downward direction does not go back upwards okay all right so that sums up the whole foregut and foregut was also given a name which was the name it was called as the stomodium all right coming next to the midgut midgut can also be given the name i told you the name was called as mesenteron okay enter means something to do with the digestive system mes means in the middle all right so midgut or mesenteron now this is a short narrow tube it is present behind the gizzard okay and also it is called as the ventriculus too now because this is called as ventriculus what part am i talking about over here so when i talk about until the gizzard i have covered this right from here all the way up till here okay now this onwards i'm talking all the way up till this region over here all right so this region over here i'm covering and i'm labeling this as the mesenteron or the midgut now over here we see this whole region that i'm shading in right now this is called as the ventriculus either you can call it as the ventriculus or we may call it as the stomach of the uh, cockroach now because this part is called as the ventriculus that's why the gizzard being just before it we call the gizzard as the proventriculus okay so that is the reason why gizzard is called as proventriculus because right after the gizzard you have this region called as the ventriculus okay now just before that just before the ventriculus opens and the gizzard ends can you see these tubules over here okay so let's just we color in these tubules let's cover it in a blue color all these tubules which you see here okay there are total of eight tubules okay these tubules are arranged okay these tubules are arranged in a circular or in a spiral way that's why it's called as is it is having a rosette shaped manner and how many are there there are eight of them what are these tubules called as these tubules are called as hepatic ck now this word hepatic itself should give you a hint that it is going to be behaving like a gland why because the word hepatic refers to liver and in our body also liver is a gland which is going to be secreting enzymes which help in further digestion so here hepatic ck are going to be functioning like a liver it will be secreting enzymes okay in order for food to be digested and onwards okay now it is present between the ventriculus and the gizzard they are six to eight finger like diverticula i told you there are total eight of them more specific okay and they are helpful in digestion as well as in absorption of the food all right so after the hepatic ck now we come to this whole region over here which we are going to be calling as the ventriculus okay 
now this ventriculus can be divided into two regions okay ventriculus this is a whole long coiled part you can see and it is divided into two regions the first region is called as the anterior part which is the secretory part and the second region is called as the absorptive part that is the posterior part so the first part will be doing the work of secreting stuff secreting chemicals so that the food can be digested the second part the posterior part of it will start the function of absorption okay so yes just like in our stomach here also the process of digestion and absorption both are happening here okay so anterior part which is the secretory part let's talk about that first it has many gland cells naturally if it is going to be doing the work of secretion then it's going to be made up of glandular cells okay so it has many gland cells and whenever you have a gland cell you know that glands basically do the function of one basic function and that will be secretion okay that is why we say that the anterior secretory part is made up of gland cells and it is going to do be doing what it will secrete several enzymes okay so enzymes are going to be secreted by this uh, ventriculus itself for digestion also the bolus of food that is there okay bolus bolus of food that is present in the mesenteron it is enveloped by a membrane which is called as the peritrophic membrane now the whole food which is entering into that mid, mid gut is going to be covered why because there are chances that the food might be still having some sort of structures which are going to harm the lining of the intestine there could be certain injuries created uh, caused in the digestive system because of the food material so we want to prevent injuries and that is the reason why the food bolus is going to be enveloped by a chitinous and porous membrane and that membrane is called as the peritrophic membrane okay so we see here that the peritrophic membrane is going to envelope or cover up that whole food and that membrane is going to be secreted by the mid gut okay and why how is it secreted look at that the membrane is a network of chitin fibers okay chitin fibers found in a matrix which is made up of glycoprotein means a matrix that's made up of carbohydrates and proteins together so there are chitin fibers in this matrix and who is secreting it it is secreted by again which part of the mid gut is is secreting the anterior part so the anterior cells are secreting that matrix into which the chitin fibrils are present and that part is going to wrap up the food so that the food doesn't cause harm to the lining of the intestine what is that membrane called as again that membrane is called as the peritrophic membrane okay peri means all around so it is going to be present all around the food bolus all right okay next we come to the hind gut hind gut can also be called as the proctodium all right hind gut is called as the proctodium why do we use the word procto because procto means procto means rectum okay so procto means rectum over here now this hind gut is seen to be it is a long coiled tube and the hind gut also is made up of three regions so until now let us see if we know the labelings which have happened until now here okay first we start here with the mouth okay after the mouth this part here this is the pharynx okay this is the pharynx after the pharynx this part here comes the esophagus all right okay that's the esophagus this part here is the crop after the crop comes this part here that we call as the gizzard okay next that gizzard was marking the end of the foregut next comes the midgut and in the midgut this first part here is called as the hepatic hepatic ck all right after the hepatic ck came the actual stomach of the cockroach and we called that region as the ventriculus we call it as the ventriculus after the ventriculus now will open into the hindgut so now we begin with the hindgut part also called as the 
proctodium okay it is a long coiled tube it consists of three regions let's see what those regions are first starting with the ileum now let's see where the ileum is right over here this part that you're seeing here this is called as the ileum now ileum is spelled with an e remember this over here i l e u m ileum next part is called as the colon if you know the colon is a similar word used for even for our part and it was a part where behaving as a large intestine so basically anything and everything passed into here would actually be substances which have not been absorbed so if they're not been absorbed means that these are the undigested particles which need to be eventually thrown away all right so the colon is behaving here as our body's large intestine and it is going to be containing undigested undigested food materials okay and after the colon the last part here that would be the rectum and the rectum is the part where the undigested food material would be stored after that the food material would come out through a last part which is going to be called as the anus okay now internally this whole hindgut is also going to be lined and it is going to be lined with a chitinous cuticle all right so internally the hindgut is lined with a again chitin is present there a chitinous cuticle this all is there internally present internally linings are present to prevent the digestive system from any damages which the food might have okay all right so the first part of the hindgut let's begin with the ileum okay it is a very short tube and it is present behind the mesenteron now look at this part here there are six bundles okay how many bundles there are six bundles of fine thread like yellow tubules and they are blind tubules now what is the meaning of blind do not tell me that blind means cannot see when i'm talking about zoology and if i say the word blind blind means that it is going to be closed at one end okay so we see that we're talking about this region right here the thread like structures okay there are six bundles of them and if you actually count them there are 150 of them okay 150 what they are 150 tubules they are doing the work of excretion okay if they're doing the work of excretion that's why i'm giving it the name as malphigian tubules because if you know malphigian is a common word which we're going to be using whenever you want to link something with the excretory system now if it's doing the work of excretion then naturally it is going to be throwing out some excretory product and what are the excretory products that animals can throw out which are they do you remember them they could be either ammonia okay or it could be urea or it could be uric acid okay now which of these three these are all waste which are called as nitrogenous waste okay now which of these three is the cockroach going to throw out cockroach will be eliminating out the nitrogenous waste in the form of uric acid and because it eliminates it out, out in the form of uric acid that is why cockroaches mode of excretion is called as they can be called as to be ureotelic let me write it here they're called as uric sorry they're called as uricotelic all right so because they are excreting out uric acid you may call them as urico they are called as uricotelic animals okay these are the animals which are going to excrete out uric acid all right now what is the ileum going to do remember we're talking about ileum okay ileum has two functions major thing to collect now collect what and from where first ileum look at the positioning of the ileum okay it's positioned right here so basically ileum is going to be there are two things which will be draining into the ileum first the nitrogenous waste coming from these malphigian tubules and second the undigested food the the food coming from the ventriculus that's why over here we can say right here we can say here ileum is going to be collecting one collecting uric acid from the malphigian tubules and two 
collecting the undigested food from the mesenteron. So these are the two things that ileum is going to be collecting. One is the uric acid, second is the undigested food materials. All right. Then as the ileum has collected all that, all that undigested waste materials and the nitrogenous waste, the uric acid will be passed on to the next part and the next part is this part right here which we are going to be calling as the colon region. So the colon region if I am saying I just told you a little while back that the colon is behaving as the large large intestine. All right. If it is behaving as a large intestine then yes it does have to be passing out the undigested waste material. But also in our body, the large intestine also does an important work that is to be uh, absorbing water. Okay, so ileum is opening into a long coil uh, tube which is called as the colon. The colon is going to be leading into the rectum and the rectum will open into the anus. Okay, now talking about the rectum here ahead. Rectum is going to be having folds. How many folds? Six folds and those folds and remember this part here those folds are going to be called as rectal papillae okay there are folds inside the rectum those folds are going to be called as rectal papillae now what is papillae papillae generally means any projection which is there okay so in a smooth surface if you have a projection you would call it as a papillae so here inside the rectum also there are rectal papillae present okay what are these papillae going to do these are going to be doing the function of reabsorption of water okay so whatever water is present extra water i told you that that's that's the work of the large intestine and the rectum to do that rectum because of the papillae which will increase the surface area that will do the work of reabsorption of water to make sure that unnecessary water is not lost from the body okay and that too this is a basic reason because the cockroach does not want to lose excess of water that's why out of those three ammonia urea and uric acid that is why the cockroach chooses to excrete out uric acid because in order to excrete out uric acid very minimal quantity of water is required that's why you'll never see the cockroach passing urine do you no because that much water is not thrown away only for be for passing out that uric acid all right okay so uh, mainly the rectum contains the rectal papillae and the rectal papillae is going to do the work of reabsorption of water from that undigested food okay all right so now we're done with the rectum obviously whatever undigested food is remaining behind would be passed out through the anus okay so right from the mouth all the way up till the anus we learnt about those three digestive system parts they are the stomodium the mesenteron and the proctodium okay next we come to the digestive glands of the cockroach so after the elementary canal we next are going ahead to the digestive glands now there are basically three digestive glands in the cockroach digestive system first being the salivary glands second being the hepatic ck and third being the glandular cells of the mesenteron now when we talk about the hepatic ck and the glandular cells of the mesenteron these are going to be secreting enzymes and those enzymes basically are going to be responsible for breaking down food materials like how you've got in our body we have um, enzymes like proteases lipases and uh, amylases sucrases all of that for breaking down the food material which are those enzymes we'll see in a while but remember three digestive glands salivary glands hepatic ck and the cells which are inside the midgut or inside the mesenteron okay now first and foremost if we start with the salivary glands okay talking about the salivary glands let's look at the structure here basically i'd like you to view this as three structures here and three structures here which are those structures these are lobes one and two lobes all right and this is one big structure here it's called as the reservoir so three structures over here three structures over here all right i hope that's clear now let's just concentrate on one part here 
this part here this whole thing over here is called as a glandular lobe okay how many glandular lobes are there there are two of them this is the first one i told you and this is the second one so there are two glandular lobes here the lobe is made up of several small 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 lobules the glandular lobes are made up of several small lobules okay those lobules are given a name and they are called as acini all right what are they going to do this is the basic region where saliva is going to be secreted so basically all these small regions that you are seeing here are the regions from which saliva is going to be secreted where is that saliva secreted that saliva is going to go inside this tube can you see these tubes here is going inside the tube and then let me use a blue color since i'm talking about saliva so from here the saliva will enter and it will go upwards in this direction and enter into this over here and this tube that you see there is what we are going to be calling as the gland duct because it is a duct arising from these glands okay which glands the lobes is called as the gland duct one from this side and one from this side too now these two gland ducts from both the ends are going to come together and they are meeting together if they are meeting together can i call it as a common duct so wherever we have a head here this part here is going to be called as the common duct of glands okay i hope that's clear you have the common duct of glands now a head we see as saliva is traveling upwards in this common duct of glands afterwards we see that the saliva is going to go and pass into this tube which is behind it do you see this whole big tube over here so saliva is then going to go into that region and go downwards okay so now the saliva is going in a downward direction this is the tube or this is that duct which is going to be leading and is going to be making the saliva go into this region here where the saliva can be stored and because the saliva can be stored over here this part is going to be called as the reservoir okay why reservoir because over there the saliva will be stored either reservoir or it can be called as receptacle we will remember it as reservoir so here there is a reservoir here there is a reservoir so whatever is the duct which is leading to the reservoir may i call that as the duct of reservoir so this right here is going to be called as the duct of the reservoir okay now since the whole labelings are done and now saliva has been secreted it has been traveling and now the saliva is finally stored inside the reservoir now what did, did the saliva was the saliva made just for the reservoir to store it no saliva was made so that when the cockroach will be eating food saliva can go on it and act upon it right so now how to get that saliva out as the cockroach will put food into the mouth and start chewing as the food enters into the cockroach's mouth the reservoir will start to contract and when the reservoir contracts saliva will be pushed out in the opposite direction so let me use another color for that saliva will be pushed out in the opposite direction flow back in the opposite direction go upwards and open right over here and what is this my children this is going to be the region of the hypopharynx what is the hypopharynx hypopharynx is the tongue and the tongue is where the food would be and that is why the saliva is going to open right that very region so that the tongue itself can start mixing the food at that region right when chewing is happening okay so i hope the whole uh, structure of the salivary gland is clear over here if you'd like to just take a screenshot of this all right take a screenshot of the salivary glands and their labels all right remember the names lobules which are secreting can be called as acini remember one thing that the lobules that the saliva that they are secreting contains an enzyme which is the which is present even in the our saliva and that enzyme there also it is called as amylase okay amylase is an enzyme which is going to be uh, digesting helping helping in the digestion of starch all right now 
let's come to the different parts let's see if you remember it beginning with what part is this this is the mouth after the mouth would come the pharynx then would come the esophagus followed by the crop crop results into the uh, opening of the gizzard and then remember these two this one tubule here another tubule here this one here was behaving as the liver and we called it as the hepatic ck then between there this part over here was called as the stomach or we can call it as the ventriculus then next part these here were the malphigian tubules for excretion followed by the hindgut and that was the first part the ileum the colon the rectum and finally the anus all right so these were the different parts that we learned about the digestive system these here this was the salivary glands remember i told you remember three basic structures in those three basic structures the two lobules and the reservoir okay all right now let's come to the a very short topic a very easy topic and an interesting one too all the parts that you have seen until now right from the starting of our lecture until right now we were just learning about the different parts now let's see how those parts are synchronizing together and helping the cockroach to actually consume and eat up the food all right so talking about the physiology of digestion first process in that is the food collection so food actually has to be collected by that cockroach the cockroach is not going to sit with its arms its hands and a fork and a knife and start eating the food aram se no it doesn't work that way food collection is going to be done by the cockroach using different multiple parts of its body so let's see which they are first of all we know that the cockroach is omnivorous it feeds on all types of organic matter now it is going to first have to know that this thing in front of it is eatable okay it is palatable so here first of all it needs something which can sense that and it has all factory sensile where remember the sense of smell sense of smell was done in the cockroach with the help of its antennae so the antenna of the cockroach is behaving just like its nose and that is the function of olfaction so antennae helps in locating the food also for holding on to the food it has these palps what are the palps these extensions that you're seeing here these extensions are called as palps and those are called as the labial palps why labial labial was another word for labrum okay what was labrum and labium that was all the upper lip the lower lip so there are labial palps okay that is the uh, labrum and the labium the one with the pulp is the labium actually and also maxillary pulp what is the maxilla the additional jaws so all of these extensions that you're seeing one extension here of the labial pulp another extension here of the maxillary pulp they will help the cockroach to hold on to the food okay here it is once again you can see that this is the labial pulp very clearly and this is the maxillary pulp okay they help in holding on to the food catching the food then food is going to be seized with all that labrum labium and the four legs too okay labrum and labium are going to main function upper lip and lower lip they prevent the falling down of food they are they make sure that food doesn't fall down because many a times you know if the cockroach is eating and suddenly you show up there the cockroach has to run does it want to throw away all its food and run no it will rather hold on to some of it how will it hold on to it remember it has a preoral cavity who's going to make sure it doesn't fall the upper lip and the lower lip will make sure that the food doesn't fall when the cockroach is running so it has some food while running okay so the food there is going to be mixed with saliva while it is chewing okay now after the food is captured next process would be the digestion process so after swallowing the food is going to be passing through the pharynx passing through the esophagus and finally it will reach the level of the crop now understand one thing the crop is just a region where there's going to be storage of food and this is not a region where enzymes will be digested so enzymes are not digested here okay what then how does digestion take place in the crop well let's see here in the crop it is mixed with digestive juices where are these juices coming from 
juices would mean that there are enzymes there right but where are those enzymes coming from i told you right now crop does not secrete enzymes so where are those enzymes coming from they are coming from the mid gut upwards okay so these are enzymes which are going to be regurgitated what was the meaning of the word regurgitation regurgitation meant upward a backward flow so we see that the enzymes are coming from the juices from the grooves of the gizzard so through that mid gut the juices will come up through the gizzard and enter into the crop so that digestion can start right at the level of the crop hence we see that most of the food is going to be digested at the level of the crop okay now we also see here ahead that partly digested food is going to be filtered out remember the bristles were present at the level of the gizzard so the partly digested food will be filtered out and later on it will be passing through that stomodial valve so stomodial valve is basically the one between foregut and midgut and then from the foregut the food will enter into the ventriculus and remember ventriculus is a part of the midgut so this is the whole journey from the mouth till the ventriculus okay now as uh, as we reach that the food has entered into the ventriculus that's basically where all the digestion will take place saliva contains so many enzymes let's see which are those first there is amylase which contain which converts starch to disaccharides now i'd like you to know these enzymes which i've written i'm going to enlist here are going to be the exact same enzymes which are present in our body too which means that they are going to be breaking down the exact same things even in our body amylases are going to be acting on starch and it will convert it into disaccharides what is starch starch basically it is a polysaccharide okay starch is a polysaccharide that polysaccharide is going to be converted to form disaccharides all right so who is doing that amylases is doing it next we talk about another enzyme it's called as invertase invertase does the further digestion if disaccharides are formed then disaccharides need to be converted to monosaccharides and those monosaccharides would be glucose and fructose okay now so the invertase does the work of converting the disaccharide that sucrose to form glucose and fructose next talking about maltase maltase is going to convert maltose what is maltose maltose is a disaccharide okay and it will convert it into the monosaccharide that is called as glu glucose so basically all these three were talking about digestion of carbohydrates okay next lipases means digestion of fats and when fats are digested means that the lipids are going to break down into one fatty acids and two glycerol these are the monomers individual units of the polymer of lipid next proteases means this is going to be helping in breaking down of proteins all right so it's breaking down protein to form the simplest form of protein that would be amino acids and last here in the body of the cockroach cellulose is also digested remember in our body cellulose is not digested but here cellulose is digested by an enzyme called as cellulase who is secreting that enzyme that's being secreted by microorganisms which are residing inside the hindgut of the cockroach so in the hindgut of the cockroach there are microorganisms present which is going to help in digestion of the cellulose and cellulose is converted basically into glucose because cellulose also is a polysaccharide all right okay so now we also see ahead in the ventriculus we see that the digested food will be absorbed and the undigested food is passed to the hindgut ventriculus means we're talking about the midgut okay midgut and then finally everything will be digested and absorbed whatever is not absorbed will be the undigested food passed to the hindgut hindgut all right and in the ventriculus the digested food is absorbed and finally what happens is the remaining material is going to be thrown out as dry 
pellets okay through the anus so now when we say that these dry pellets are there the dry pellets contain two things okay remember this the dry pellets are containing first undigested food undigested food and also don't forget it also is containing uric acid water content is going to be very less and because water content is very less that's why it is eliminated in the form of pellets so these are called as the dry pellets all right so kids this marks the end of the digestive system of the cockroach i hope this was an interesting lecture and i hope this is going to be useful for you if you liked my video please go ahead and like this okay go ahead and give me a like and do share my channel and i hope you have done it until now i hope you've subscribed to it too so until our next lecture day after tomorrow which will learning a new new system of the cockroach stay home stay safe and take care bye bye